We are here with Oysten Brun from Bornagar, of course. Oysten, again, now that we are recording officially, how are you? Good to have you. I'm perfectly fine. Thank you. Yeah, my, my pleasure. A really, really big fan of your music. Actually, well, a couple of months ago, I, I saw you on your Latin American tour. I'm in Argentina, but I traveled to the Mexico Metal Fest. Uh, I did a great show over there. So any highlights of the tour you'd like to share? I know you share the stage with Leprous uh, and also some other bands uh, during the, the tour, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole tour for us was a big highlight, I would say. I mean, Mexico was great. Uh... Uh, awesome festival, you know, uh, and um, yeah, we brought the rain for Bergen. A bit or rainy, North. right? Yeah, you. So you it was really weather. rainy, and, and you know <laughs> the the right atmosphere and stuff. Yeah, for sure. And, um, yeah, Costa Rica was great as well, and also we did two shows in, uh, and the Costa Rica one was um, kind of special because we played within flames. Right. Yes. How was and that like? was that was kind of cool, you know, because that uh, you know in flames was the first band we ever toured with back in the. Oh, really? I think it was 97 or something like that. So, you know, old friends and stuff. That was kind of uh, kind of really cool. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm, sure, did... I'm sure you also may, maybe were, were at festivals together and at some point as well. Or did, didn't you? Yeah, of course. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, of course, you know, but we have played on some festivals. But we, you know, on, on festivals, usually there is so much people and so much going on and different playing schedules. So... We, you need, there is not often that we I haven't met the guys for quite some time at least mm. so so this time you know we shared a backstage and everything and was able to you know talk a little bit with the guys from you know from the old days and stuff so that was cool right and and then we flew to uh, to uh, to Santiago in Chile and did um, two two, uh, two shows concert. right yeah two shows and one uh, side show just an extra show because um the first one we announced with Lepros was sold out in mm -hmm. short time. So, so we added an you know additional show with uh, only us and our support band, I guess it was. Um, and we did a little bit, yeah, a few more songs and stuff like that. Right. And, you know, tried to make the yeah because I, I I saw a lot of comments when you announced the show with Lepros around there that were requesting a Bornagar show on your own. <laughs> As well. Yeah, 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 and uh, yeah, and you know we listen, we listen, we we yeah. you know we care. So yeah, we did that. We you know we was asked by by our manager if if you know it was able to do an extra show and yes, I know Ruben. You you are working with Ruben, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talent Nation or Ruben. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So so there was no there was no uh, easy for us to say yes to that because you know it would be of course nice with a day off and all that stuff. But but you know we, when we are traveling that far away on the other side of the earth basically so um, you know why not work a little bit more <laughs> mm, for sure yes yes of course um well listen this uh as we're talking about live shows and concerts may seem like a weird question but i wanted to know what what do you expect from an audience while while a show because you know the the, the music from bornagar is very eclectic both violent and sing along there are many parts where the song slow downs and you different sorts of attention. Do, do you look for some something in particular in a crowd in order to tell that that you're both enjoying the the show, or is it something that you don't pay much attention to? Yeah, of of course we 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 mind it definitely. I mean we we care about our fans and stuff. But you know I don't. The only thing I'm I'm a simple guy from the countryside. I don't you know expect too much in this world really. And as long as I you know we feel that the audience have a good time, enjoy the music, and you know, move along, so to speak. That mm. is the most important thing for me, uh, to, to be quite honest. Um, if there is a mosh pit, if there is stage diving, you know, all these things, you know, that doesn't really... Uh, it's cool, okay. of course, but but the most important thing is, is you know, to get... You know, to get this kind of magic moment on stage when you have this dialogue with the audience, they have a good time, we have a good time, we play our music the best of our abilities, and they, you know follow up as you know all that stuff it's it's kind of dy dynamic thing and mm. and i you know I've, i've been in this business so long that i don't really you know expect anything but um, i'm i'm happy if you know if i can see on the eyes or the, the audience or you know whatever that they they have a good time that that means yeah well because I, i i mean your your music evokes a lot of different sensations it's, it's not always That's the, the the crowd cannot always be moshing because that that's not always what the music wants to tell the the, the audience maybe. Absolutely, and and you know we we kind of see that that's something we kind of try to you know keep an eye on sometimes you know that we are we are not the 
typical moshing band or you right. know typical stage dive band you know kind of grindcore band going full mm. blast for for 60 minutes so that's something we understand but but you can you you very very you know when you enter stage and you do the first song and stuff you kind of get the notion quite early on that you know are we on in dialogue with the audience so to speak mm. and 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 if you have this kind of um kind of musical conversation going it's it's easy very easy for us you know to just move along and play along right. and you know and all that stuff and that that you know that that makes a a, a, a gig great that that makes you know the the feeling of the feeling of doing all this doing all the sacrifices traveling a lot all that stuff you know that makes it worthwhile in a sense. Yes, yeah, more more special. So, so to me, it's it's quite simple. As long as I feel that the audience is happy, and they kind of into the stuff we're doing and all that stuff, I'm 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 a happy boy. Okay, yeah, for sure. Uh, well, Oisin, let, let's discuss Fall, your upcoming record. It's coming on, on February via Century Media. It's a great album. I I've heard it already, and so congratulations on the first play. Always great music from your end, guys. We we can never expect anything but less from you. So I've heard an, an interview that Lars gave a couple of months ago, actually with a Mexican um, outlet before the, the festival. He stated that this album was the continuation of the evolution of Bornagar. Nonetheless, in, in your press release, I read that this is the spiritual successor of True North. So what does this new album represent from Bornagar's uh, discography in, in your own mastermind uh, founder opinion? <laughs> Yeah, you know it's it's you know I've, I've been working. We have been working with these albums for so many months and so many you know spent so many hours on this one. So it's it's hard to kind of sum everything up in in a few minutes and stuff like that. Mm. But you know, as as you said, I mean we 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 I've always had this idea that I want to you know always you know push and and take a step further with my music, always evolve, always progress and that stuff, you know, to challenge ourselves musically and also a little bit the audience, you know. So yeah, definitely we you know I try to keep this back sack of of music of musical legacy that we have done through the years from you know all the albums to try try to keep the musical core of the band consistent in a sense. But but still, I think you know it's very important to to move on, to move forward, to to you know climb another mountain in a sense, mm. and and um, that was also the intention with this one. There was a lot of qualities to uh, the the previous album True North that I wanted to bring bring further on this album. I mean, one thing is you know the the riffing, the arrangement, and all that stuff. But there, there was also nerve to True North that I liked very much myself from a personal perspective and and and, and true enough to me is a is and was a quite direct rough um at times pessimistic and brutal album in a sense also of course also blended in with all kinds of atmosphere yeah. and stuff but mm -hmm. but still the album had some sort of in my opinion some uplifting spirits there was something you know energizing about that album something yeah. Is it it wasn't kind of pitch black in a sense. Uh, there was something um uplifting with that album, in my opinion. Something that gives you energy, that kind of, you know, um, yeah. And and that was an element I personally really wanted to to bring on to this album as well. That, you know, yeah, it's sometimes it's dark, sometimes it's even brutal, and sometimes it's you know kind of crazy. And, and spiky and and harsh but uh, but uh, still there is some some energy to it that kind of lifts you up rather than drags you down in a sense well i i, I think that the song summits was a great way to portray all that 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 you're mentioning mm. because the, the the song starts you know very violent maybe black metalish and then it starts breaking down and going through the layers it, it has and I, I think it had, if it had been the other way around, like with uh, Stars Ablaze, for example, that people haven't listened to that song yet, but the impact wouldn't have been the same as, as the song Summits, right? What do you think? Yeah, I totally agree. And and I think, you know, also lyrically and con conceptually, the, mm. the song Summits is is very much about, you know, just that. Uh, it's 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 a brutal song. It's a very kind of, yeah. kind of describes the wild and uncompromising side of nature in a sense. But but as a contrast to that, it kind of deals with you know the the fighting spirit, the 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 willingness to 
to survive the you know the the, the urge to to success with whatever you want to success with the, the song is basically from my point of view a, a song about you know finding your own peak in life you know whatever that is what if, if that means living on a mountain by yourself or if that means being a ceo of a big business yeah sure but you know it, this this internal yet external battle everybody kind of has in order to to achieve to success in order to you know uh, get somewhere in life in in, in a sense um so it's mm. yeah it has a very kind of uh it's it's dark song definitely uh and it's very kind of realistic and, and in in way as you said in the beginning spiky but it kind of has this this up, uplifting inspiring touch to it I would say and and um, and yeah that was that was the intention I, you know I love those kinds of blends it's kind kind of kind of sweet sour food you know it's mm -hmm. it's 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 kind of this sweet and sour it's it's um in a way that is way of love I mean sometimes you have a bad day or you have a whatever a bad year or something but it's not pitch black I I hope yeah. you know there is always some lights there is always some stars on on the sky you know there even even though it's everything looks incredibly dark pitch black even um there will be some hope some light something there out there you know at some place that is possible to reach or achieve in a sense so so it's it, that song kind of deals a little bit about you know this this very classic human struggle i would argue do you think that that that's the the strength of bornagar's music the, the the duality between certain aspects of of your music yeah i certainly hope so because that is is my approach to to basically music in general i mean fundamentally music is con it's all about contrasts it's all about you know um it's fundamentally is just you know sound waves going up and down and and you know carrying sound in a sense and 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 you know yeah i think um, music in um and you know music is such a human artifact in my opinion um so in my mind if if you know music should have if in order to get have get music that you have this this uh, i don't know how to Put it really but um <laughs> I, i think you know point, the great, really. yeah the, the, the you know the the real the, the great music the classic music that kind of lingers on forever is in my opinion typical music that has a very human touch to it in a sense mm. um you know have the all these facets of life have all this drama of life in in one or another way you might scope in on a small situation or you might scope in on a big the whole life the whole existence but but this 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 is uh, to me is kind of very important um aspect of the music that we i try to be honest you know tr through my music in a sense that right. it kind of mirrors my life all the shades of gray and all the ups and downs and all the sunny days but also the rainy days mm. so so you know all this this very human facets is something i want to sort of bring into my music right yes and that's what you've been doing since the beginning because a statement that i that i hear very uh, usually is that well uh with your debut album for example you were much more black metal well maybe but you were still doing a, a lot of this this stuff as well this this duality between the, the the more violent and maybe more i don't know calmer aspects of the of the music or introspective i don't know how to put it Yeah, absolutely. And you know, for me, music somehow should be be with beyond words. I mean, the really great music in my mind is 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 hard to grasp, it's hard to point out, it's hard to describe in simple terms, I would say. You know, music is something that should be on beyond everything in a sense. Um I'm not a religious person, but to me, you know, if there is anything in my life that is religious, that's my music in a sense. Okay. And, you know, it, it, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, um yeah, what can I add? I I mean it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's you know, I I try to, you know, music it somehow should be in a way bigger on life. 
and you know um it should be something a a, a way to to escape sometimes a way to you know dream float away on a dream or you know just you know get captured and and you know get some kind of experience like like you know with music with you know emotional and all that stuff it's kind of complicated matter i would say but to me music has that profound role in the life and you know that's something you know i try to achieve the same with my music basically mm. And I forgot your question, to be honest. <laughs> no, yeah, don't don't worry. Uh, but uh, well, we, we were mentioning that maybe music is something a bit more transcendental than only descript descriptions or or that stuff. But I also uh, scratching all that. You know that maybe people also reference some progressive uh, elements in Bornegar's music. You have it more present maybe in some albums than than, than others. Uh, certain passages in the song Summit, for example, unraveling in, in, in this album, I, I find it a bit there. But the question is, I, I guess what I want to ask you is, how has your, your taste in music throughout the years uh, changed? If maybe now you think you were able to pursue some stuff you weren't able to do back in the day? I mean, have you acquired new influences uh, throughout the years? Yeah, always, you know. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm very, you know... I... To me, music is about honesty, and I can't fake it. I'm not not 19 years old anymore. You know, I had a different scope on the world back then. I had a different kind of life. I was, you know, I was twice as young as I'm now, and all that stuff. So, you know, I have to be honest about that kind of personal evolution or progression or whatever. I think that 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 should match my music in a sense. And and you know, I I'm I'm yeah. 48 now and and you know for me it would not be interesting to approach to approach music in general both as a listener but also as an as a an composer and all, all that stuff um i i can't approach that the same way today as i did back in in 94 for example you know that would be that would be you know force that would be fake you know in a way mm. uh, i have to be honest about things you know what inspires me what what music what what i musical ideals i have and and one thing that i can't slip my mind talking you know regarding the, the questions question before is that i've i've always since the very very start of the band tried to i've done everything in my power actually to try to avoid all these musical tags yeah so you know when when people ask me journalist or whatever you know what kind of music do you play um hey man i mean i mean i i spent my life trying to get away from all these tags you know i don't care uh you know i whether it's black metal or how to define traditional black metal you know it's an absolutely meaningless discussion for me um i i don't care about that stuff and but but I've, of course i realized that I don't know why, but the society in general, and not only when it comes to music, seems to be tends to to group things, you know, to to See, this yeah. and that, yeah. and this is us, and this is you guys, and you know, this this different teams, and and I don't know, I've be, never been, you know, thinking too much towards those lines, to be honest. Right. Not personally speaking in my life, but but not either through my music. I don't care. You know, it's it's a discussion I don't want to spend much time on, really, because, you know, I just want to do my music the way I want to do it. That's it. And, and, yeah. and you know, there is different reasons why it, you know, turns out like it is. And, you know, we have a long story and all that. And, you know, I have visions, blah, blah. But, but at the end of the day, I, I really try to make music that... Of course, the best of my, my abilities and also music that, you know, um, is something I would listen to myself, my my ideal music, you know, music I would love to find somewhere, uh, maybe. And and of course, it's a bit of, a, you know, doing music is also a little bit of self-centered stuff. I mean, I, I for me, it's about the creative process, making something from basically nothing. Um, you know, I've always been very fascinated by the fact that you basically can make a huge song that has a huge impact on a lot of people based on basically nothing except for some riffs. And, you know, it's 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 non-physical. I mean, it, you know, the art of music starts basically non-physical. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have you have guitars, you have to, you know, an instrument to play and all that. But with the ideas, the riffs, the atmosphere comes from 
you know, in my case, a mental map, basically, an ID, an vision, or a, a, you know, whatever musical goal. So, so, um, yeah, maybe I'm a little bit weird in all this, but, but you know, I, don't know. <laughs> I get your point. Yes, <laughs> certainly. Um, uh, Oisin, I, I would like to ask you about the artwork as well for the for the record. Uh, it's quite different from from what you had been doing, in in my opinion. They're often tended to be a, a central object or something that stood in 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 the cover. Maybe uh, the earlier works perhaps are more simplistic in, in in a sense, but this time just water cascading with with a different uh, painting style. So uh, how come you 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 chose uh, to well to represent the, the the artwork this way, and how does it blend with the concept of, of the album in your opinion? Well, you know, um, so, you know, when it comes to album title and album cover, that's usually always the, the final pieces of the puzzle in our case, uh, especially the title of the album. It's mm -hmm. that's always the last thing we decide on or settle on because, you know, to me, the whole thing of making an album is a process from from the, from the start to the end, and till you know I've delivered the master to the record company, it's always something you know that might change or you know we we are kind of it, it's a kind of active working process till the master tape is is kind of delivered. When it comes to the cover, um, actually, that was a little bit of a cool story because we had some different ideas and even different ideas about the album title. But at some point in this process, we I got with Century Media and they had some kind of event going in Berlin where they have the main office and stuff in, in mm -hmm. Europe. And um, they was they, some of the guys happened to meet Eleron Cantor. Yes, um, the artist. And he, you know, told them that he... One of his wishes, to, you know, in his career was was to work with us at some point. Nice. And I was like, and uh, and they apparently had a discussion about our, you know, music, and he enjoyed some old albums and stuff like that, and really wanted to to work with us. And and I talked with this this guy from the la label, uh, yeah, some days after, I guess, and he told me all this, and I was like, because at that time we have. I had kind of settled a little bit on a, a, a cover that, you know, reminds a little bit of a true north and more kind okay. of a picture and stuff. But then they told me this story that, hey, you know, Eleanor really wants to, you know, come aboard maybe, maybe for the next album because now it's just a month left for to the deadline and stuff. And we might not have enough time to, to do this work and stuff. But I was like, yeah, sure, let's try. And and I had a good log talk with uh, Ron Canto, and he was really into the idea and the concept of the album. And I sent him some demos and 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 the lyrics uh, <clears throat> for the album, and basically just gave him the free, you know, do whatever you want to listen to the music, read the lyrics, and let me know what you think. Do whatever you want. Give him kind of artistic freedom to 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 work out something, and. Um, yeah, it was amazing when I first saw the 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 the, um, the draft he did, just to make sure we're on the same page. And I was like, really, kind of, wow, this is cool. Um, because the only thing I asked him for in in regards to the artistic side of it was that I wanted the cover to somehow show the the uncompromising wild nature in a sense. Okay, you know, the, the brutality of nature. And also, I, I, another thing I told him that I wanted to have some. I don't want to have humans on the cover. I don't want to have a body or a face on the cover. But I have want to have something that you know reminds of human existence in a sense, like like some remains or something that kind of reminds a bit of a human you know figure or something. And you know, we had a long discussion, talk basically talking about everything else than music, to be quite honest. You know, talking okay. about daily stuff and being father and having kids and all that stuff, and very kind of you know, kind of private talk, really. But based on all this, he came back to to us, to me, with this amazing cover, in my opinion. Yeah, it's and, beautiful. Yeah, mm. and and also it kind of struck a very personal string in me because. When I was a kid, I spent a lot of summertime with my father up in up in the mountains. We ha we have a old old farm from the 15th century uh, in my family in my extended family. Mm -hmm. So when I was a kid, we spent a lot of time there. And and um, just close by this 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 farm, actually, that was the farm I did the the photos for the old domain cover. All oh, right, just 
just as a detail in in the story. But but close by this farm, um, there is a huge waterfall. And I remember when I was a small kid, I, I very much enjoyed being there because I, you know, when you go down to this waterfall and watch this, this you know, mighty, uh, what can I say? It's it's so powerful. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so you awesome, you yeah. get completely encapsulated in the sound, the, the buzz of the, the whole waterfall. You feel the, the, you feel the danger. You feel the, you know, you get wet, you get cold. Everything in your body is saying, telling you that shit, this is dangerous. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. And, you know, this has always, uh, always kind of fascinated me since I was a small kid. So that he was able to capture this, this yeah. notion is something that, you know, only brilliant artists are able to do that stuff in yeah. my opinion and, yeah and without it, um, without knowing or, or perhaps knowing just a bit he managed to touch a personal string on you with that cover yeah really and that's kind of almost a little bit emotional because i you know it's it's it, <laughs> almost i almost like i got a little bit paranoia it's like, what's, <laughs> is he following you know is he right. tapping my phone what's going on here oh see in my head you know <laughs> but, yeah yeah, yeah, he got inside my head in a sense, right, and that's right. that's that's uh, to me that was just amazing. And and actually at that point um, when we got the cover, we we kind of decided a little bit, you know, on the on the title of the album. And and mm. when I got the final album uh, cover, you know, with the logo and everything, I was like, no, nah, it had to have, you know, the album is has to be be called Fall. That's yeah. it. And okay. and uh, and um, so it was kind of interesting in that sense because we had. We had a kind of a you know dynamic cooperation with Elron about you know the cover, but also the album title and and and, and things. So so it was um, it was awesome to have him on, on board for for this uh, yeah this work yeah yeah. Uh, well, Oisten, we are nearing the end of the interview. Just one last question, and I'll I'll, I'll uh, let you go do your other stuff. Uh, some standout tracks, in my opinion. Well, of course, Summit's great song. Uh, Northward, the closing track is amazing. Stars ablaze. But I I think I don't know if, in your opinion, what one song that will be well an anthem, as the word says, is Nordic anthem. I I, I see it as a song intended to be played uh, live. You'll you'll prove me wrong if I'm mistaken. But what do you think? Yeah, let's see. I guess <laughs> there is chances, definitely. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. Let I, we haven't decided to be quite honest, but we haven't even started to talk too much about the next next set list. But but yeah, I'm I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Well, Oisin, thank you very much for for your time today. Uh, really, again, it's a great album. So congratulations, and looking forward to everybody around here in South America listening to it. I don't know if you'll be if, you, if you'll visit that again again. I don't know in, in this year, but hopefully next one or at any point, we'd gladly like to see you around here with the new record. Yeah, we would love to come back. I mean, every time we are in in South America, in like yeah, just a couple of months ago, it's always uh, we always have a very good time in in South America actually when when touring. So so we will definitely try do our best to come back. That's that's for okay. sure. Great. Well, again, Noistin, thank you very much. Uh, really, I, I appreciate your your time and well, all the success for for the this new album of of Borgnagar. Thank you so much, man. Okay. Thank you so much. For See you. Goodbye. See you. Bye bye.